<laughs> um, I'm going to India because um, India recently, in the past five years or so, started multinationalizing their brands and they're working uh, heavily right now on international advertisement for which the Caucasian model is the norm. So I'm going to India on a three month contract complete with a maid and a chauffeur um, to basically do like the Indian versions of like L'Oreal and products like that. That's when, uh, that was before India asked for my hair to be darker. Right. Why does India want darker hair? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, India, in India, okay, they really like the dark hair and light eyes thing in India. That's like, I don't know what they look for, so my hair had kind of like lighter red in it. It was brown, but it had some light red in it, so they wanted to for it to be darker so my eyes pop more, and it kind, it's just... I mean, I don't look Indian at all, but it's like one feature, the dark mm. hair, that's sort of similar to their own women. I'm just another, like, I'm one more model in the millions of models that there are. So I feel like I don't really have that much of an impact. And if, like, if I'm taking advantage of this experience in a more, like, morally justifiable way by, like, actually, like, going to temples and, like, volunteering and stuff in my spare time, then... Like, it's, I don't really have that much of an effect on, like, like, just by me modeling, I'm not going to affect that many more women, you know? I feel like doing this has sort of helped me get closure because it's just reinforcing all the things that I had to think about before I even, you know, had any contact with the industry. I, um, I understand better what goes into a picture. Um, and it's really just a temporary thing. I just, it's a quick cash grab. I'll be in a couple of photos, um, be able to pay for university and that's how I've morally justified it to myself. And also to be able to talk about this stuff because that was an important thing for me from the beginning is to sort of, um, to, um, dispel some of the myths about the fashion industry, um, you know, things like the fact that models have to fit in a one-inch margin and these, you know, I mean, I mostly fit into it. I mean, my hips are like one inch larger than they should be and my waist is one inch smaller than it should be and my um, agent manipulated my my measurements on paper so that I had less curves, that my waist was one inch larger and my hips were one inch smaller, which is completely ridiculous because women are meant to have curves. I remember just being younger and reading Seventeen magazine at like eight and comparing myself to the girls in that magazine um, and just not feeling adequate because I adhere, like I, I subscribe to that false reality that um, the, the industry creates because women don't look like the, <laughs> women in real life don't look like they do in the photos and magazines. A lot of work put is, goes into it and behind the camera there are like at least five people who go into making this person look the way they do. There's the hairstylist and the makeup artist and the clothing stylist and the photographer and like a director assistant, assistants and stuff so it's just not natural and it's just a false reality so and photographers after we're you know talking about all these photos and you know what kind of cool things they could do with them and and what they would need to change about them and they were talking about just taking out these little tufts of hair and they can do that they just put it on their programs and right, just like right. take out these little flyaways or whatever so on the one hand i, I was almost a little bit jealous of the fact that you were going to have access to this this elite world where women are special um, because in our society it tends to be that we concentrate on women um, being special for their looks. So it's like suddenly you had access to this totally satisfying um, world where people were going to um, provide you with you know, self-esteem and love and that's the way I was thinking about it. And then on the other hand, I also felt betrayed, like you were going to play into all these images that I grew up watching, and I know some other women 
grew up watching and it affected them emotionally and physically and that really upset me to think that my best friend would put herself in a, in a situation where she could potentially make other women feel bad about themselves. Um, the people in the industry aren't hearing the people outside of the industry. They need to start understanding that the media really does create an atmosphere whereby, okay, sure, maybe a girl has grown up in sort of a turbulent family, but then she can reach out to the sort of world that the magazines represent, the world that films represent, the world that television represents, and latch onto that as something to help her escape the problems that she's had in her upbringing. And I think that even though the media is not necessarily creating the problems, the media is playing into them. And I just really wish that the industry and the people involved in the industry would start looking at their human side and empathize with the people, not all people, but the people who do have a problem with modeling and the people who are affected by the images. And I just wish that they would listen and not just totally disregard it. And on the other hand, I, I wish that people who were not in the industry would also start looking at um, the industry from other angles. I'm learning like I'm not learning from it like from their perspective I'm not you know learning how to make myself the way that I should be or whatever but um, there are times when I have to bite my tongue because um, especially my Asian will talk about how you know isn't it wonderful that we have this world that there are all these things that we can buy and we can have essentially anything we want but I know that we're just like a handful of the population as in like North America that has everything we could possibly want in, in, in our stores. And my job is basically to create a relationship between the companies and the consumers. Um, and that reality that I create to create that relationship doesn't exist. It's just out of the director's imagination as images. I think that if we can create a dialogue and create awareness between the people um, that are involved in the industry and people who are outside of the industry, something might happen and I mean that might be too idealistic it might be totally false but I think that it's worth a try because for too long it's been this sort of elite ideal universe that women have looked up to and I think that if we can bash that down and come to terms with the fact that it's so constructed and that these people are just people that it will really help um, help bring it back down to reality maybe help unwind um, the, con the consumerism that's attached to these kinds of images.